all, but thank you. Thank you. All right, so the slides are already online and ready to go. If you bring up the URL there, slides.unsupported.io uh, slash explore dash strace, at least when you're looking down at your laptops, checking your email, things like that, I always think you're looking at my slides, so it's helpful. Um, so if anybody wants them, anybody got them, we'll leave it up there for a few seconds more. And cool. All right. If you do bring them up, the cool part is, as I go, as I go along, you all, we will follow along with me, okay? So, um, like I said, your system calls in you a brief exploration of S-Trace. Uh, I don't like standing up there very much. There's demos at the end, I'll come back up, but usually I'm down here walking around. Uh, it just makes it easier for me to kind of go through this. Uh, all right, so, first off, hello. And uh, I think a lot of people don't start off with at least hello, right? So, hello, my name is Alex Suarez. I wasn't expecting an introduction, so that's why this slide is up there. Um, I wasn't sure how the audience would uh, sympathize with Adele or Lionel Richie, so they're both up there, right? Um, so, again, hello. And also, um, thank you for coming out. There was a lot of great talks at this same time slot, some that I wanted to go to. It would just be weird if I didn't go to them, uh, or I didn't go to this one instead. So, uh, thank you for coming to this talk. Thank you for spending your time with me. I really do appreciate it. Um, my goal here really is to entertain you long enough to learn a little bit a little bit of something. Uh, hopefully you walk out with a little, little bit more knowledge. Hopefully no less knowledge. That would be weird as well. So, um, how are we gonna get there, right? Our agenda for today, um, kind of the topics we're gonna talk about. First, we're gonna talk about why this topic? Uh, why spend 45 to 50 so minutes talking about a very simple, very simple tool, very basic topic? Uh, then we'll talk about what is S-Trace. The, Experience level in the room can probably vary from 10, 12, 15 plus year admins to two or three year Linux users. Uh, so I want to get also on the same page on what S-Trace is, the same lingo, the same jargon, okay? And then we'll talk about system calls, which are kind of the core of everything going on here uh, and, and kind of the, the, the meat of it. After that, we'll do some demos because what's a presentation without demos? The chance that things go horribly wrong. It's always fun. <laughs> so, so far so good. Wi-Fi works, this is working, you know, so. That's kind of cool. Uh, then we'll do continued learning. I can't show you everything about S-Trace or about anything in 45 minutes or 50 minutes, right? It would be impossible to really cover everything. So what I'd like to do uh, as part of my role at Rackspace, as part of my role here, is to get you enticed just enough to go out and learn a little bit more and give you the tools and the opportunities to do that in an easy fashion, right? Make it easy for you guys to learn more. Make it easy for you guys to go out and, and just pick up more information. Lastly, we'll do some Q&A. And uh, by the time it should be lunch. So here we go. So, so why this topic, right? Um, again, why spend 45 minutes talking about S-Trace? Uh, for me, it's two things. Uh, the first thing is about solving problems. At Rackspace, one of the things that we do is, one of the unique things that we do in a managed hosting environment is that we get to see thousands upon thousands of configs every single day. Uh, while most people have environments where they run 10, 20, 100 plus servers, most of them are the same. Most of the configs are the same. They know what's running on them. Uh, at Rackspace, in a managed hosting environment, we have thousands of configs every day, er running everything from your normal LAMP stack, right, very basic stock install, to very custom apps, to the Java app that hasn't been updated in five years because developers know where to be found. <laughs> uh, and so we have all those bits of information, uh, bits of things going on. What that does is present us with lots of opportunities, we'll say, right? Opportunities to, to learn and to figure out things, right? A lot of troubleshooting, okay? And also, this talk is about going back to, oh, phone's dead. Oh, there we go. Going back to basics. Um, because we have so many configurations on so many different servers, we can't guarantee we're gonna have the latest and greatest monitoring or uh, application software, right? We can't, we're not sure we're gonna have a uh, new relic, right? or app dynamics, or any of those things installed on there, right? Any type of monitoring. So this is a talk about a tool that was pretty much came out, its last really big push was in 93, right? I'm talking about a tool that started in the 90s, uh, poured over from Sun. This is not the latest and greatest, right? But this is a tool that we can use to troubleshoot anything on almost any server anywhere, okay? That's why I call it, that's why I call it a back to basics talk. That's why I find it super useful for the admins that I work with every day so that they know how to use S-Trace in a very, a very effective manner. Because no matter what's on that server, 
they can understand the very, very base core of what those system calls are doing to troubleshoot what's going on. Okay, so that's kind of why this topic, right? So, so what is S-Trace? Okay, we'll cover two things. What does S-Trace do and how to use S-Trace? Okay, first off, very simply, S-Trace can interrupt a process, trapping the system calls and the return codes and giving it to you on the screen. Everything that the application is doing and the way it communicates with the, with, the, uh, with the kernel, it's letting you know what it's doing, what those system calls are, okay? Um, so, wait, right, what are system calls, right? I've already introduced a new term, a new topic. System calls are, are those functions that the kernel exposes out for you to use from your application. Most applications don't call system calls directly. They call libraries, right? Things that are implemented by glibc or different uh, C libraries to then talk to that hardware directly, okay? So your system call is that kind of interface between what you're writing in code and what you actually happen on the system, right, with the kernel. Okay. Whoop. There we go. Oh, uh, you go. Yeah. So, very basic, right? Jumping right into it. We can use strace first off by doing strace, and then the application we want to trace. Very simply, strace and w. We'll do all all the examples you see up here. We'll do demos of. So don't worry about what the output is in the next couple of screens. Uh, we'll do demos of it, and we'll kind of go through that step by step uh, in the demo section. But what you might get is something like this. All right, uh, you'll get the system calls that you see up here. Okay. Um, hopefully, if you can't see it uh, up here on the screen, it's a little small. I think. Uh, hopefully, you can see it on your devices or your laptops. Think of that question. That'd be great. Oh. I'm ugly, it's fine. <laughs> they don't want to see me anyway. Yeah. If we can, I'd like, I prefer them down. Maybe not. <laughs> All right. Ooh. All right. I like that. A little better? Yep. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> like any good admin? You don't know he's there, he's doing his job well. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Wait till something screws up in a second. <laughs> okay, so that's the example output you might get, right? We can build upon that command and then do, oh, phone, thank you, phone. We can build upon that command and then a dash V to make it a bit more verbose and get all of the gory details. If you can see the screen, notice up here this first line, this exec line, What's happening here is it's, com it's combining all the, uh, your environment variables into a small structure and not showing them to you. But with a dash V, it goes out and gives you all those gory details, okay? Um, you know, you may, you may hear sometimes that something like cron doesn't run with the same environment variables, right? You can probably verify that by S-tracing it and see what environment variables it does have, what environment variables, what environment variables do get passed to it, right? So kind of really deep down in all the little gory details, okay? You see all your environments, you see your path up there, um, your home directory, right? Your logon name, all those little details, okay? We can also trace processes that are already running. This is useful for, again, for that Java app that no one wants to restart, and your server has been restarted in three years. We see those. Um, somebody has one of those. <laughs> uh, those, are, those are fun. Uh, so we can trace a process that's already running, right? It's also useful, an example we'll see later on, uh, for tracing, uh, like, daemons like Apache. And you have a web server, right? Anything that's already running, you don't want to kill off, we can do that, okay? Now, in, in doing this talk a couple times, this example always comes up, right? Um, big old warning. When you trace a process, strace sends a sig trap or signal to the process. Some processes can detect that and just shut down or act unexpectedly. Usually these are proprietary installers, think Plesk, right? Something they don't want you to kind of reverse engineer, okay? Something that involves a, a serial number or something like that. Uh, you know, this happens all the time with us. When we install Plesk, it doesn't go quite right. We want to figure out what's going on. We'll S-trace it, and then they'll remember that we can't because it detects that and kills out and says, we're being traced, we're stopped. So literally, your S-trace pr S process sends a SIG trap and your application is like, whoop, hold on. It's a trap. Hold on. 
Now, it may continue on and continue to, to run and give you what you want back, or it may continue to just die, get a sick stop, a sick kill, right? It depends on what application might be coded. So keep that in mind. If it's something that you really can't have die off, and it's not acting just the right way you want to, maybe look at other options, okay? Um, but again, it's very, very rare that this happens. Uh, again, mostly Plesk, right? It's kind of the big one we've seen all the time. So. Small applications can give you quite a bit of output, even just small ones like W or password or things like that. So we can save the output to a file, simply like this, s trace dash O, file, and command, or the PID we want, okay? Ooh, wait. Let's figure out what happened here. Okay. That's good. Thank you. All right. No big deal. There you go. Where is, <laughs> where is caffeine? Close. Where'd you go, caffeine? Boop. Is it up there anywhere? Uh, where'd you go, caffeine? <coughs> All right, it's probably on. Okay. <laughs> Let me turn off the displays real quick. Well, I know what's going on here, so I only estimate it. Uh, let's see here. Turn off mirroring. And there is caffeine. Awesome. Display, arrangement, mirrors. Uh, for people who do present, caffeine is a great little tool. Again, it's one of those things that just continues to. Uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. No. Where would you go, Firefox? There we go. All right, it, caffeine just continues to move your mouse for you, quote unquote. All right. Ugh. So again, we can direct the output to a file if we want to. Normally it goes to standard error. Um, just keep that in mind, not standard out, but standard error. Try if you try to pipe it to, and get you know, the first 10 lines, something like that, you just need to redirect standard error to standard out. All right, so next. We can also file, uh, follow uh, child processes. This is, again, we'll see this a bit more explained in our, one of our last demos, where we S-trace Apache, okay? Uh, for those who are familiar with Apache, you may know that the root process kind of has a main PID, but it spins off all the child processes that handle all of the connections. We don't wanna follow the root process, we wanna follow that child pro those child children processes more than anything else, okay? So we can do that as well as you see up here. And these commands are just building on top of each other, right? Um, what we're seeing here is we're doing the dash FF to follow the children, dash O to put it out to them the file, and then a PID for whatever, maybe the Apache process, maybe it's something else, okay? And the output's gonna look something like, like that. You'll see what you'll get from that command is all the files individually labeled with whatever name you gave it, as well as the PID number, the associated PID number for it, okay? So useful stuff. Uh, we've seen this uh, used it multiple times when um, the scenario is that Apache is seg faulting over and over and over, and we think it's the PHP file somewhere in there. Um, what we can do is do that, S trace, follow the children, and attach it to the Apache process. What we'll get is we'll see a process that they all attach, and it'll die off really quickly. And the last line of every single one of those files will be open such and such PHP file, and then sig fault. Okay? Uh, so super useful. And super helpful when you want to show a customer, look, it's this file. All these processes die from the same file. Did you change anything? No, right. <laughs> Except that one file, right? I've, I've been on the phone with customers for 45 minutes to an hour. Did you change nothing? No, no. Show them that. Oh, we did change that one thing. But it shouldn't affect it. No, it's part of the framework. So, <laughs> all right. You can also use strace to not only get the output, but get stats, get a summary of the system calls that were made, any errors, and how much time they spent on each system call. This is useful when, for example, I'm not sure where to start looking at a process. Right? We've already seen here the output can be quite big, and we'll see it again in the demos. Um, so it's helpful to see, okay, where is it spending most of its time? 
Is it spending most of its time malloking memory? Is it spending most of its time opening files, checking for other files? Right? We'll see that here. And what you'll see is the output looks something like, look at that. Okay. You'll see here that you get uh, the percent time that's spent, and it's percent time in system calls. Okay. Uh, from the man page, it's trying to measure that uh, from the time difference between going into the system call and coming out of the system call. Okay. You'll get the number of seconds it's spent. I believe that's wall time, if I remember correctly. And then the number of calls it does, the number of errors. The number of errors are uh, the number of, if I remember correctly here, the number of negative one return codes for an error. Okay. Maybe the file wasn't there, right? Maybe something that's not going to be detrimental, but again, maybe the file wasn't there, maybe you didn't have permissions, any of those things would cause an error on, on something like that, like an open like that right there. All right, let's see here. And then lastly here, we have um, how a process can exit, right? We'll get that at the very end of that strace file. Useful to see if the process did exit out correctly, right? Useful. Or if it was killed by a signal or with a different return code, okay? Now, we, could get, we can get the return code from a bash, you know, a variable just as easily, but we can save this and look at it later on. So that's kind of a quick rundown of some of the flags I find useful and how to use strace. Okay. Our next thing here is going to be system calls. Okay. Um, you, this, this slide came up a little earlier, right? I want to make sure I introduce a topic or a term and define that very easily on, very, very early on. And the same one here, right? A system call is simply that it's a function provided by the kernel that the application uses to access, um, make hardware calls, right? To write a file to get memory pointers, things like that, okay? Now, there are about 441 different system calls. I'll show you how I got that number later on. Uh, some of them are synonyms for others, um, so not quite that many, but there are quite a number of them. We'll go over a few of them today that I find useful, kind of the first ones I want you all to know to kind of really, that most programs are doing, right? Opening a file, reading a file, checking the stats of a file. We'll look at those very briefly. Um, and also, this is one of those sections where I want to talk about um, finding out more information and learning a bit more, okay? Um, the man pages, usually we hit man and then a command, we get uh, a man page up, right? Now, which section of the man page we get um, can vary, okay? Uh, the man pages are built out to different sections. Uh, section number two is for system calls. Now fine and dandy, but there are some commands, or as you see here, a bash built-in, that have the same name as, as those system calls. For example, here, read. Okay? If you do just man read, you'll get the bash built-in man page. Not what we're looking for when we're trying to figure out what a system call is doing. So, simply, whoop, man, man to read, and then we get, as you see up here, the system call man pages. Uh, and this works for, you can do man, two, and then any system call and get that information back. Okay. Um, keep in mind, some may bring up the system call page first. Some may bring up another one first, right? Stat's a great example of that. You run man stat, you're going to get the man page for it. You're not going to get the system call page for it. Okay. And we'll see that later on as well. Um, let's see here. I really regret throwing a 30-second time on my phone now. <laughs> All right, a note on system calls. Uh, the good thing about system calls is that they all have a similar structure, okay? As we see up here, okay, uh, you have the system call. If I can do this real quick here. You have the system call, for example, read. Then you have any arguments, right, that you might have for that system call, and then a return code, okay? And the beauty is that all of these system calls have the same structure. They'll have the command, any arguments, and the return value, okay? And from the man pages, you can look at what the return value should be, what it means, right? And what those structures are that you are, are doing inside those system calls, okay? All right, so let's cover a few of them that I find useful, um, especially when someone's just learning about system uh, strace. Um, kind of the ones you're gonna see almost every single program I'm doing. So let's start with this. Opening, whoop, uh, there we go, there we go. Opening a file. Right, opening or possibly creating a file. Uh, most applications are going to want to open a file, create a file, things like that. 
Um, what you'll get up there is you'll see, you'll give it a path name for it. You'll see any flags you want to do, use with it to read only, open, append, any of those things, right? Um, and what you, so what you say, you give a path name, and open, open returns a file descriptor, right? A file descriptor is simply just a small number that the program will use to reference that file later on, okay? And what can you reference that file would exactly be the read system call. Notice here, what it's expecting is a file descriptor, okay? Coming from the return code of that file we just opened, if you will, okay? On success, returns the number of bytes read, okay? If you see that you're requesting to read 800 bytes and you got 400, well, maybe you had an error. Maybe you read to the end of the file, right? Um, so you can, you can look at your system calls and see, hey, am I reading as much as I expect to be reading? Yes, no, why or why not? And then f stat or stat. Again, this is another one of those where if you just run man stat or man, uh, yeah, man stat, you'll get the, the uh, I believe, the application man page. But if you do a man to stat or f stat, you'll get the, uh, well, syscall man page. There you go. Okay. And this ter returns the information about a file. This is what the stat command shows you, right? It returns the I know of the file. In a, in a structure, you can begin to read those variables out, right? For example, the IO number, the permissions for it, things like that. Okay. And then lastly, yeah, lastly, uh, we have the syscalls for mapping memory, right? To map memory, to unmap memory, uh, get a pointer back, right? Uh, we've seen it where applications just go through and map a ton of memory and we can show it it's doing that by looking at the system calls, right? Um, so yeah, again, those are some of the most basic ones, or at least the most introductory ones, right? The ones you're going to first see when uh, you start looking at different applications. All right, so enough of me talking. Let's do some demos. This will be fun. You get a chance to see me type horribly. Okay, uh, real quick here. So on the slides, if you don't see a quick video up here, just refresh your page. It comes up sometimes on the second time. Um, I have these videos up here as part of the idea that you take these slides later on. And whatever demos I'm doing on the screen, you'll see up here later on, right? Uh, obviously, the demos aren't being recorded. So I try to provide these for you all as a kind of base to what I did up here on the screen. Because um, usually, that's hard to read. And we'll go ahead and look at, for example, that's not what I want at all. <laughs> there we go. What's that? Oh, uh, anybody got some? <laughs> no, that, my friend, is the 50 year. I do not have that. $36,000 bottle. There was two in the U.S. three years ago, and there's one that came to the U.S. or oh, Canada last year. So they're very, very rare. Um, that one in San Antonio, which kind of just small little plug for San Antonio. Um, <laughs> that's after the presentation. All right, real quick, I'll show you what the demo looks like here, and then we'll switch the terminal so that kind of we can get a better view of it, okay? Uh, when you hit play here, what you'll see here is just, I guess, quite small, and we'll do it better, but again, any idea of what's going on here. Um, it's all, it's a thing called ASCII Cinema. You can copy and paste anything here. Right, play it back, kind of step it through, all fun stuff as part of kind of take it back and uh, use it later on. But for here on the screen, right, so boom, s trace dash w, right, or w, right? Again, the first example here, how to, how to use s trace. Very simply, we can run a program and run s trace around that. Trace program from the get go, and we see here, right? Um, notice what we see here, also up here is this first line, this exact line, where'd it go? I probably missed it already. All right, let's do this. This is easier. S trace W two one. There we go. <laughs> Again, everything goes to standard error. Switch to standard out. Again, first part of almost any uh, S trace you're going to do is this first exact line. Okay. Notice that we saw earlier that if we just do with S trace and W, we get very small condensed output. Okay. 
All right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you all. Appreciate that. Okay. So what you see here, right, is this first line. Very, very simple, condensed, right? So building upon that, as we saw in our, in our usage, I'm just going to add dash v to that. Again, real quick, in case anybody's unfamiliar, what I'm doing in this part right here is not part of s trace itself. Uh, I'm redirecting standard error to standard out, so I can just grab the first 10 lines of that with, with uh, the head command. Okay? Again, not part of s trace itself, just a tool I'm using. So, right? so that being said, we see now our first line here a bit more, right? All of our environment variables, everything's expanded out for us. Okay? We kind of want to get the nitty gritty of it. Okay. Uh, here we have a program not running quite right. We think maybe it's not getting a variable or a path or something like exported properly to it. Somebody like this can help you out. Okay. And again, lastly, we see here our return code. Okay. All right, so let's switch back to make sure I'm going with the slides here. Right. So the next one here, S trace dash C and W. Um, I'm not going to run it this time. I'm just going to switch back to the screen here. S trace dash C and then W. Right. And what we get this time here is we get the percentage of the, the time spent on the calls where it's spending all its time. Okay. So if we notice here, 245 calls to open. All right. Um, just jumping back here real quick. Off the head here. Right, we'll notice that a simple program like W spends quite a bit of time opening. Uh, let's see here. A few, quite a few uh, files from proc. Okay, just to get some stats for itself. Okay, that spends a lot of its time there. Uh, sometimes tech comes to, uh, tech comes to me and says, "I want to learn how to just get better at programming or get better at X, Y, and Z." Uh, projects I've given in the past is use S trace, trace your simple tools rewrite them in your language of your choice to learn how to use it, right? To re-implement re some things. So you should be able to look at this and kind of get an idea of what's going on, what files it's reading, where it's getting stats, things like that. Okay. All right, so again, we see here where it's spent all this time. Now, for example, let's say this program I wasn't familiar with, I might start looking at, okay, let me spend some time looking at all the opens, right? Now I'll show you a demo of that here in just a second here. Let me share them on my slides. All right, we can do something like this here, s trace death o, password die out. Okay. Right. And again, the o, mm, local machine, don't anybody try and cop on that now. We'll take a small amount of time to figure that password out. <laughs> I've learned my lesson before. Um, <laughs> so when I do a dash o, what I get is everything with the standard error now goes to a file. And I can interact with the program as I would normally like you see here, everything going to standard out that should. Okay? And I can look at my file and say less password.out and see my file there. Right? I can look through it, see what's going on. Can have some fun with that. Okay. okay. Now, let's see here. Are these demos going too fast, too slow? Should I slow them down? Good? All right, I got some thumbs up. All right. No one's saying no. Awesome. All right. So Here's a fun one. So we had a scenario one time where, uh, well, sorry, let me back up a little bit. As part of my role at Rackspace, one thing I do is teach Red Hat classes. And part of those classes are to have S-Trace enabled for everything. And a question came up, why would you have, uh, or not S-Trace, I'm sorry, wrong presentation, SE Linux enabled for everything. Um, and part of that, recovering the root, there's an exercise of recovering the root password where we need to relabel all the files. And the question came up, why do we need to relabel? We're just changing a password. And so what we found out is that part of this is going on. We do, let's, say, let's say we do a um, ls dash, I think it's i, etsy shadow, right? We have the ash i gives me the inode of that file, okay? And when we did a password, let's do a password again. Um, password. Okay. We saw that the inode of, it, of etsy shadow changed. So hence, if we're in a recovery mode with no SLinux enabled, it wouldn't get context. But we wanted to figure out what was going on there. So the first thing we did troubleshoot that was we did, how you saw earlier, was 
S trace dash O, you know, password dot out, password file, okay? Or password command. We did that. Okay? And let's say we looked at all the files there, and we said that's a lot of lines to look through. I don't want to look at those many lines, right? But we knew it had something to do with a file. We knew it had something to do with operation on some on an empty shadow of some sort some way. And so the next thing we can do with S trace is to limit the types of system calls that we collect. Okay, um, this is a bit, I consider this a bit more of an advanced or a next step. That's why I didn't include it in my first part. But I want to include it in demos because I think it's super useful, and it's a way to begin to really dig down and filter out what we need. What we need. So let's take the command here. And I'll break it down for you. S trace dash e trace equals file dash o password trace dot out and the password command. What I'm telling S trace here is to only grab any operations that have to do with a file. Open, close, create, things like that. Okay? And so let's do that. Okay? And then now all of a sudden our area to look through is now 142 lines. Okay, I'm looking at just the out uh, the output or the file operations. So password trace dot out, right? And we see only all the opens, right? When we get um, I'll, I'll shortcut a little bit here because that demo took forever, or that kind of troubleshooting process took quite a bit of time, but what we found out was that, mm -hmm, is that at some point, right, the password command renames a newly created file to Etsy Shadow, therefore the new inode. Okay? Therefore, if you have Etsy Linux enabled, and you need, or it's on a running system, you need to relabel everything there. Okay? So, um, kind of a way is we, have, we try to troubleshoot our own things, try to figure out what's going on, and balance something like that. Okay? You'd be surprised the number of, uh, of applications that do just that, open a new file, and then copy everything back into place after the fact. So, kind of a fun one. Again, that one was just like this, dash E, trace equals file. And you can do that trace on different families, not just file operations. I can say just the opens, or just memory operations. Okay? I can really narrow it down like that. All right, and then we have another demo here. Again, that, that video there is just a demo of what I just did, so you get a chance to see it later on as well, in case you want to review it. Mm, again, building out a little bit here. Again, not quite a new demo, but again, the difference here. All we're doing is the i-v here to get a bit more output, right? And then, yeah. Well, again, what we see here is a bit more of an information, right? So. And right here is an example of what you might see as an error. You look at dash C, right? Again, nothing that's going to kill the process, nothing that's, that's fatal, maybe, but maybe something that wasn't found the way it should be. Sorry, say again? So the question is if I can filter out critical versus non-critical errors. Um, and that's not that I found. Um, just the, when you get that dash T part, right? The, let's see here. Oh. Right? Now, hold on. S trace dash C W, right? That there's no, it's just returning back wherever it comes back as a negative one. So, not that I found. There might be, but not that I found. So. All right. Go ahead and make my copy. Yeah, like, maybe it's out there. There's a whole lot out there. All right, let's see here. Okay. Um, and then one last demo here. This is a fun one. So, S trace dash FFO, our file, right, and then our PID. Um, you see here a little, uh, little hint here HT access and file access. So, our scenario. We had a customer who had their Apache document root on an NFS mount. And it had been that way for, for a long time. Everything had worked just fine. Um, all of a sudden, they brought new developers, and then things started to take a turn for the worse. Actually, let me sync this up here real quick. Um, there we go. Okay. 
So it basically got new developers, and then, like I said, like I said it, uh, their performance took a turn for the worse. And we asked them what they changed, what they changed, nothing, nothing, right? But something had to have changed. So um, this demo here, I don't have it recorded. It just, it's kind of a fairly long demo. But I want to at least walk you through it um, to see it on the screen at least once. If you have questions later on, come up to me and ask me, or reach out to me on email or whatever. We can do it again. But this demo here is on the server, I have a Apache server running. And only thing I've changed here for this server is um, I've lowered the max connections per child just so I can see things, my threads spin up quicker than I want them to, or quicker than they would normally. Okay. All right. And then what they had done is let's see here, where did it go? One second here. There we go. There it is. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's do this real quick. I'm gonna bring up here and say while true. Actually, uh, let's trace. All right. Vagrant. See local boxes. Uh, while true, curl. While true. Okay. okay, fair enough. Okay, so I'm just creating traffic on my server here. Okay, now what I can say here is say um, system CTO. Yes, I'm running rel seven or sent seven. Um, status HTTPD. Right. Because what I care about here is the, where'd you go? That right there. I'm getting the PID of the main Apache process in this case here, okay? Um, and what I'm gonna do here is say, S trace, dash FF, again, to follow those children, dash O, and we'll say slash temp, um, Apache, or let's say scale dot out, and then I'll get a PID number after that, and then, Dash P there, okay? Mm, did I get that wrong? Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go. That one is dead. That's weird. Okay, hold on here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Main pit. That's what I was looking for earlier. There we go. Okay. So what you see here is that because my max connection is so low, I'm, I'm uh, spinning up processes quickly. Okay. And what we'll see here, if I just tell this off real quick, is if I go to temp, look at all these files here, right? All those are the patch processes that we're running. Okay. Let's look at one of them really quickly here. Okay. Um, do I have it here? Okay. Okay, so the setup here is that in order, if you enable HC access on an Apache server, right, you, every directory that you have in a, in a path needs to be checked for HC access, okay? And this customer had, had their, as they called it, their, their directory structure very organized. What that meant to us, it was a very deep and very wide, right, just a lot of files, okay? Um, so for an example here, let's do this here real quick, and say curl, what have I have done, no, all right, there. I'm not even kidding, it was about this deep. Sorry? Oh, never. <laughs> so let's go back here and say slash, there. Uh, let me double check something here on my settings. Uh, there. 
That one's good. Okay. Do I have that correct? I think I do. All right. Let's see what happens here. Okay. So while true, do that, right? Hello, hello, hello. Awesome. And while it's going on, temp rm dash rf scale. All right. And then our f trace command here. Okay, so again, I haven't changed Apache settings too much right now. And so let's go here real quick. And I'll cut it off just in the interest of time and say we have 255, right? Just picking any of these here. Okay. Now, if look at that. Notice if we're here, it looks for HD access for just var dub dub. I have it turned on just for that, uh, just so I can find it in here. But you know it goes through the path of getting the stats and not a big deal, right? Uh, let's see here. Now, let's turn on, again, closing everything off, resetting everything. Let's turn on HC axis here. Okay. And this is going to be in uh, our var of HTML directory, right, where all of our path is. We're going to come down here and say, allow override all, because that's the easiest answer to get working right now. Not the best, but the easiest. Okay. All right, we're going to save that. System CTO, restart, HTTPD, system CTO. How many times I did that before? It says CTO instead. Oh, all the time, right? Tab complete, I'm like, oh, dang it. All right, system CTO, restart, HTTPD. That worked. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Timing, right? All right. So let's go back here and do this again. All right. System CTO, status, HTTP service. And let's get our main PID again. All right. And then we're going back to our S trace here of that. Okay. And again, as we saw before, attach, attach, attach. Great. Uh, now, if this was seg faulting, you'd see attach, detach, attach, detach, and you'd, have a, you'd find your error. Um, but that's good here. Now, let's take a look at any of these here. Less, uh, let's see your scale, that. Nope. Oh, sorry. Uh, ah, scale out. All right, let's grab one of these. Thank you. Now notice here is what I'm talking about here. What was happening was that, check that directory, that directory, that directory, right? Right here, right here, right here. And all of a sudden you're adding in how a number of, of calls to an NFS system that you don't really need, right? Why did they do that? Well, the developer said they need to change some Apache settings, right? And it wasn't much, but they need, because that one change, you add all this overhead. But they wouldn't believe us until we showed them something like this, right? How could such a small change have such a big impact? Okay? So you have that many more hits to an NFS directory, that many more calls on it, your performance is going to suffer quite a bit. Okay? So. And they wouldn't see it on their lab files. Yeah. They wouldn't see it, right? Because uh, it's just them. But now throw on their 20 web heads, right? All in that same NFS directory. So again, this is, just, this is my favorite example of how we can use S-Trace to show what's actually going on and where the impact is, okay? So with that, uh, almost going to a close here, continued learning, my last section here. Um, like I said, there's no way that I can show you everything. Uh, but what I'd like to do is leave you with some, some extra bit of, of, I hate the word homework, but uh, opportunities to learn if you cho so choose to do. Uh, up there on GitHub, you can find some code examples, very, very simple C code examples uh, that will help you illustrate when I do a simple open of a file or read of a file, what system calls does that translate to, right? What do those translate to? So I'll give you a real quick example of that on the system here itself. And let's see here. Uh, if I close this here, shut that off because we don't need that anymore. And let's see here, CD. S trace code examples. Okay. What you'll see here is some very, very simple C code. Um, all right, hello world. 
as with anybody first programming out, programming out, hello world, right? But what we can do is compile that, GCC, uh, let's see here, hello world, C, okay, good. And let's run ada out, again, the basic standard, just the normal file gives out there, hello world. But what does that turn into in system, system calls, right? We mentioned earlier that applications don't, Bless you. Um, bless you to all of y'all. Um, <laughs> force of habit. Um, S trace here and say hello, or oh, sorry, ADA out. Right? What does those simple library calls try to be in S trace? Uh, there we go. Right? We're going to see here all the things it's doing just for a very simple hello world. Now you can build upon these examples and say, what if I write a file? What if I malloc memory? Right? And see what type of system calls you get back from that. So you begin to see as you tie those together you, and you look at bigger applications, you see what they're doing. Right? And you kind of get an idea of what's happening in there. Okay? Um, so again, just a real quick small code examples. If we look at uh, the open file, goes through and tries to read a file. Okay? And then again, following through with this, it's a real quick here, GCC, open file. Let's see, that's fine, old code. Um, but if we do a out uh, file, there we go, right? But if we do this now and say if things we learned earlier today, s trace dash o my file dot out, like that. Okay. Again, now we get to see what those those small opens and reads look like when it comes to what's actually happening at the system level, okay? And that's a way that you all can go and learn a bit more about that, right? Small code, find other code online, and do the same thing, okay? Uh, it just helps you sort of to visualize what's actually going on code-wise to what's actually happening on the system itself, so. All right, let's see here. All right. So towards the end, I would like to kind of jump back to the beginning here. Uh, let's do this here on my phone. Because, like any good talk, right? Show you what I'm going to talk about, talk about it, and then tell you what I told you. Um, so, kind of in summary here, we talked about why this topic, or why I find it super important for text to understand, and why I wanted to share it. Hopefully, you all found it important and found it useful, or can find it useful walking out of here. Talked about what is S trace, talked about how to use it, right? And then we talked a little bit more about system calls and, and what those mean. We did some demos up there. We did some horrible typing, or at least I did. Um, things, things worked for the most part, which was kind of cool. Um, it's very rare that it happens. And then we talked lastly about uh, continued learning, right? How can you all take this from, your, from this presentation out into your next troubleshooting adventure, we'll say. Okay. So with that, again, because I'm not used to having an introduction, which is kind of very nice. Thank you very much. Um, Real quick, contact information. Uh, except by the end, my name is Alex Wattis. I'm a principal engineer at Rackspace Hosting. Uh, my role there is a lot of training and mentoring of our front end support and techs. So doing things like this for them daily, uh, kind of on a one-on-one, -on -one, or doing things on a weekly basis with brown bags, kind of what I do there at Rackspace. Okay? You can find me online. Uh, and then my uh, friend Jill was nice enough to write me a bio, which was right up there. So again, I'm not used to having this up there. Um, so real quick, that's all. And then lastly, Q&A. Oh, we talk about whiskey. Let me top up here real quick so I can see y'all if you have questions. Ugh. Questions? Correct, yep, yeah. Uh, so question was, S-Trace included in most distributions? Yes, uh, S-Trace was poured over from Sun in 91 and then kind of merged together for a 2.5 version in 93. So it's been around for a long time and, and all systems I've seen, it's on there. Yeah. Question right there first and come back here. Um, question is how can you S trace a cron job? Uh, for me, so it wouldn't be the cron job itself that I'm S tracing. I would be S tracing well, either script I want to run or uh, S trace out the daemon fort and follow its children that spins up. So that's how I attempt to do it, yeah. So, but usually it's going to be the script that I'm doing itself and seeing its environment variables that it's having. So, 
Okay, question? Um, mm -hmm. so, so again, Sorry. I wanted to S trace something like Java, but it's really it's called Unibasic by Dynamic Concepts. Mm -hmm. So this is a language it kind of stores its source in, as a p-code mm -hmm. sort of like a pascal like p-code yeah. and i'd like myself and the developers really are trying to figure out what in god's creation this thing does half the time and so how would you would s trace be an appropriate tool for that when i said java you kind of laughed and i understand when you look at the java jvm argument list um yeah so it's so the question is, you know, could i use it as trace to to trace something like java or kind of reverse engineer some code right um, and it really depends on how it's implemented. So like I said, something with an installer like Plesk that was, would trigger for it might just uh, kill out. Um, and really, it's not necessarily to reverse engineer the code itself, but to see what's happening on the system. Maybe what files you're trying to access, what memory you're trying to malloc, right? So it's not necessarily to re reverse engineer that code, but again, more to figure out what ultimately it's doing on the system. That's a question. Yeah, so if it's using end curses, which show that. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. Um, I haven't come across that in my experience, at least when I've, when I've troubleshoot stuff in the past. Um, usually what we're troubleshooting is going to be, um, for example, uh, what's the word, what's it called? Coyote, right? So it's, it's web backend or something like that we're trying to troubleshoot. Uh, we might get, look at that a little more. Uh, but I haven't seen it use end curses or kind of in that experience before. So, yeah. Question? Question? Uh, the question if I work with Dtrace. I do not work with Dtrace much. Um, I know it's out there, just something I haven't used in my day to day. So, so. Any other questions? Questions in the back? Okay, mm -hmm. that's a great question. So the question is. I'm just tracing a process, and I see follow scripters are already out there. How do I know what they are? I'm glad that question came up. This is fun. If you look at the PID that you already have, go to proc, let's say maybe, um, let's see here, CD proc, right? All the directories in there, are those PIDs are PIDs, right? So within that, and actually this is a talk I submitted didn't get accepted, so talk to the scale about that. <laughs> um, if I go into any of those directories, those PIDs, if you will, let's do one because we all are pretty sure what that is, right? Um, and I go in there and look at the directory FD, or file descriptors. It will give me the file descriptor to the file. Okay? So that's where I, you can tie this together. Okay? Any other questions? You're very welcome. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? No? Cool. Thank you.